Hello, everyone. How are y'all? Thank y'all for joining. All right. Hi, Victoria. Hey, Miana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's so great to be with you on, on Instagram. Yeah. Likewise, this is a whole new beast for me, so I apologize in advance for any errors or technical stuff that happens on Instagram, but I want to say hello to everybody joining. Thank you all for joining as we have this conversation, and yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. So we're here to discuss um, over-the-counter birth control pills um, and, and the importance of insurance that over-the-counter birth control pills are accessible to Black women and young people. We invite you all to put your comments in the chat, any questions in the chat, but we are going to be answering them at the end of the video. So if we don't get into certain questions, just know that we will get back to them once we're finished. But yeah, let's do a very brief introduction. So yes, my name is me, Anna, and I am the program coordinator for Get Smart Before You Get Sexy here at um, Black Women for Wellness. And Get Smart Before You Get Sexy is a comprehensive sex ed program where we teach young Black girls how to get smart before they get sexy. Um, so there's emphasis on both sides. So we do the Get Smart part by empowering them through workshops, through um, empowering them to love themselves and exercise body autonomy. Um, and we do the sexy part um, by showing them how to prevent, prevent certain STIs and STDs um, and showing them how to have safe and consensual sex. So that's a little bit about our program and I'll get a little bit more into it as we go forward. But Victoria, do you mind introducing yourself? Sure, I'd be happy. Happy to. Hi, everyone. Hi, Instagram. Um, <laughs> it's really great to be here. This is new for me, too. So um, uh, really uh, great to be here. Uh, I'm Victoria Nichols, she, her pronouns, and I'm the project director for Free the Pill, which is a coalition-driven campaign. Black Women for Wellness is one of our uh, long-term partners, so really excited to be doing this in, in partnership with um, them, uh, but we're working to bring uh, birth control pills over the counter in the United States, ensuring that they're uh, fully covered by insurance, priced affordably, and accessible to people of all ages. So um, we are closer than ever to this becoming a reality, and I'm really excited for this conversation to talk about particularly why we take a reproductive justice approach in our work and what that means in terms of centering the voices of, of Black women, Black people, um, who are interested in this issue uh, and leaders in this work. Right. So thank you. That was a very insightful answer. Um, and may I ask you, what drew you to this work that you're doing right now? Oh, uh, that, yeah, that's a great question. Um, lots of different things. But I think um, at the heart of it, it, it really um, is an issue that I'm I'm passionate about and interested in it. In because um, it's about bodily autonomy. It's about the right um, and the um, you know the right the right to be able to do what you want with your with your body, um, to control your health, to control your reproduction, and to also decide when you want to have children uh, or if you want to have children, um, and that that decision is you know deeply personal and varies from person to person. And so uh, really, uh, I, I'm interested in freeing the pill and uh, bringing birth control pills over the counter because it'll allow more people to have that um, ability to, to make that choice and determine that for themselves. So that's what really drew me to this work and why, um, why I'm fully in it. I agree. I agree. Bodily autonomy is something that is very big to me as well and it also um in, informs a lot of the work that i do here at black women for wellness as the program coordinator for get smart before you get sexy um and to provide and speak a little more to your point of why black people should be centered around you know free the pill work 
I think that the reason why Black people should be centered, and specifically Black women, should be centered around the research and the work that you all are doing for Free the Pill is because, of course, every woman deserves access um, to birth control. Um, but we see through studies and data that Black women face a lot more obstacles when trying to obtain birth control. Um, maybe it could be transportation or maybe it could just be them being fearful of being judged when they go into the doctor's office. I know it's a, a big thing. Um, they might go in there and think that, you know, they're there, that they may think that the doctor thinks that they just can't control themselves and that they're there because they're making wrong decisions. And that could kind of cause them to walk into the doctor's appointment with their head down. But when in reality, um, in reality, they're there because they can make decisions about their bodies and they are sure about the decisions that they want to make about their bodies um, and that they're smart enough to be there making the right decisions um, for their body. So it's quite the opposite. But, you know, some things like racism and different stereotypes may, you know, make Black women feel differently and cause them to not go into the doctor's office. And that alone is a barrier in itself that deters a lot of Black women for going in and getting the help and the support that they need. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that stigma is such a deep um, issue for, you know, the, the Black community and, um, you know, combine that with systemic inequities driven by our system and our healthcare system and the, you know, the barriers to access um, and care, you know, due to lack of transportation or the cost of a provider visit mm -hmm. or, you know, not having insurance, things like that, they all stack up to equate to, I can't get my health care, yeah. you know, so um, you make a really great point that it's, it's a lot of it also is about the perception of it and stigma and and what we may think other people are thinking about us. But another aspect of it is also just that there are barriers in our environment, in our systems and our policies um, that make it difficult for people to access care. And uh, unfortunately, those um, are more present for, for Black women and Black communities. All right, well, I think you answered my next question. <laughs> and you did it perfectly. Um, thank you for getting into some of the cultural aspects um, in the historical aspects that has a big part in why Black women and Black girls should be centered in this work um, and why we should look at it from their perspective. Um, and I just want to share a little bit more um, about why Get Smart Before You Get Sexy um, centers young women um, and young people in the work that they do. Um, and specifically, their Get Smart, I mean, not their, our Get Smart Before um, You Get Sexy program. So um, I believe that the young girls that we work with, and I think one of them is on the live. Shout out to you. I'm not going to put you out there. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, I think that um, it's very important to catch young girls and young people at a very young age so that they don't grow up into believing that their bodies are part of legislation and that mm -hmm. laws are supposed to be made over their bodies. I don't want them to even begin to even think that that's something that is normal and that is something that they are not able to control. So catching them at a very young age and helping them understand the concepts of bodily autonomy is big in the Get Smart Before You Get Sexy prog program. That's actually one of the biggest parts in the Get Smart part, getting smart about your body, getting smart about your rights. Um, knowing what someone can and cannot tell you about your body or your rights is very important and I feel like will take them very far. Um, I want them to grow up to know that when they do decide to become mothers, if they do decide to become mothers, it's because they, you know, have the choice to be able to make those decisions and that that wasn't taken or given to them based off of what a doctor said or what their family said or what their partner said. It's something that was, that's something that stems from their very own decisions in oh, life. Cool. And I think that's just very, very important. I want them to be able to walk up to a clinic and get the help that they need. Um, but of course, that's not the world that we live in. So having these pills over the counter and making them accessible will be very helpful. And I always bring up the example of, you know, 
I think we all know the running joke when someone goes into the doctor's office and then the doctor asks, are you sexually active? And like, you can feel your parent or guardian's uh, glare burning a hole in your face. Cause you're like, you're trying not to look at them. And you're like, no. And even just that fear of saying, or, or you know, not satisfying your parent can lead to unhealthy decisions um, and take away the belief that they have the right over their bodies, no matter how old they are. Um, if they choose to get on birth control, they choose to get on birth control. And if they don't, that's another thing. That's their choice. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to go on my, my rants. I want no. to. Oh, no, that's great. I mean, I always, I, I always really uh, enjoy and um, value connecting with people who have, you know, who work directly with young people and can get their their feedback and learn more about their perspective. And I'm curious to like learn more from you in terms of what the young people that you work with what what do they think about the concept of freeing the pill. Um, you know, we're always working to make sure youth perspectives are centered because they're one of the communities that stands the most to benefit from birth control pills moving over the counter. So curious if you've gotten any like feedback or what, what the young people you work with think about this. So yeah, the young people who I work with, I've been trying to get them, my interns and my PEs, I've been trying to immerse them in the free the pill work as much as we possibly can. I know there's only so much that we can do, but getting them involved is very important to me. A lot of them had no idea what Free the Pill um, meant. And if I'm being honest, I didn't not too long ago. But once I did learn what it was about, I realized that this was something that we need to be pushing for and advocating for um, because everybody should have full authority and choice to just walk in and get what they need and leave. They shouldn't be having to jump through all these different hoops. Why do you, why do you need birth control? Or how old are you? Or, you know, it, it just really pushes someone away from getting the help that they, it doesn't even have to be that they need, but that they want. And that mm -hmm. is their birthright, you know, to choose to be a mother or not. Um, so that's very important. And I also want, I also tell them that, you know, being on birth control does not mean that you are sexually active. A lot of people get on birth control because they, you know, have heavy periods or menstrual cycles and, you know, birth control can help to regulate those cycles. So it's, you know, it should just be as easy as going down the aisle to get your pad um, and your birth control to help regulate your period. Like it, it, it pertains to them as that's what I tell the young people. They may not think that it pertains to them, but they, they will understand how important it is to them as they get older. Um, and I would hate for them to have to find out these things once the world around them has changed so much that they don't have a, a say right now. They have a say mm -hmm. right now. We have a say. Um, and I just really, teach them how to advocate for themselves and advocate for their bodies with little, not little, but with campaigns like Free the Pill um, and getting them involved in different things in different ways so that when it's time for them to go onto their college campuses, um, they're ready to hit the ground running and they're um, ready to be advocates um, and advocate for the changes that they want to see in the world that they live in. And to my point, on college campuses. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what are some of the biggest barriers that you feel like young folks on college campuses face when trying to access birth control? Sure, and I'll answer that. And then I'm gonna ask you the same question because I know you you have like, your, your, you're a college student right now. And so would love to hear what, what you think. Um, but we, we work closely with Advocates for Youth and they uh, recently conducted a survey of not just young people, but just people who either are young people now or reflecting back on when they were, were young. And um, there were a lot of people who talked about, you know, when they were in college or when they were younger and there being certain barriers that were in place just specifically because they were young. Um, and some of those included like transportation, um, which I, I think you mentioned before is like getting to a doctor's office if you don't have a car. 
um, can be challenging, especially if you're on a college campus and might be further away from uh, a healthcare provider. Also, healthcare centers, you know, that they have hours that close at a certain time. So it's not like it's open 24 hours a day. Um, there's stigma that that people face if you're um, trying to access those those services. And then also, you know, thinking about um, uh, the ability to pay for a provider's visit. Uh, a lot of college students have plenty of other expenses, books, college itself is is not not cheap um so you know adding on the cost of a provider's visit can be um another expense and another barrier to access uh, what do you think as someone who's you know in in school now what what barriers have you or your friends experienced that um that you would add to that okay so when i was in school um it was, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have went to a school where I was able to go onto a portal and make my appointments and everything was covered and I didn't have to go home and make any appointments and have to face scrutiny or judgment from my mama or nothing like that. I was fortunate to be able to do that very discreetly. But um, mm -hmm. at the campus that I, you know, attended, People who did not have insurance had to go into that counter and they would put their head down and they'd be like, I need an STI test. Like they would whisper, whisper, I need birth control. And it was just like, they would try to do it so that nobody saw them and that they were, so that they weren't judged um, or that there weren't anybody thinking less of them. So it's just a very tricky, a very, very tricky um, situation for college students to be in because they're old enough to make their own decisions. I mean, we're all old enough at any age to make our own decisions, but they're they're adults, they're considered adults. And you, you still see them being afraid to advocate for what they need because of mm. being judged or because of being turned away for not having insurance or being able to not go home and tell their parents, hey, I need a, I need a appointment for X, Y, and Z because they're feel fearful that their parents are going to be like, well, what do you need birth control for? So it's like, no matter how old someone is, we're beginning to see this pattern re repeat and replay um, just with healthcare and having access and not having access being one of the biggest barriers. Um, it's going to continue to be a cycle and having access to um, birth control over the counter would literally make everybody's lives so much easier. It would eliminate mm. transportation issues. It'll eliminate embarrassment. It'll eliminate the room for anybody to ask questions about what you're doing with your body because it's really nobody's business. Um, it'll eliminate that a lot, completely actually. Because um, who cares what the person ringing you up has to think? <laughs> about you know you purchasing birth control because you know i used to feel that way about buying pads i was so embarrassed to buy pads growing up because i was like oh they're gonna know my period um who cares like i don't think the people ringing you up are going to care much they're about paying attention. Birth control. <laughs> they're not paying right. attention so that's not even going to be a barrier anymore um and then mm. it'll just really allow people to stand true and firm in their beliefs and their values um a large part of the RJ framework is just letting people know that they have the choice to be mothers, that they have the choice to not be mothers, mm -hmm. um, and that is important for their children to grow up safely and in safe environments. And when there are conditions and barriers blocking people from making those decisions to become mothers or not to become mothers, you know, we don't, people don't often take into account how that may affect um the environment that that child grows in. Maybe mm -hmm. someone wants birth control because mm -hmm. they simply cannot afford to bring a child into this world. Maybe that is just as simple as that. And when we are, you know, restricting them in different ways, we're taking away um, the opportunity for that child to grow up in a safe environment where this was planned. We're taking away family planning when we take away access to birth control and everybody deserves to plan their family mm -hmm. or, or plan to not have a family. It, it, it can go right. both ways, but the bottom line is everybody deserves, uh, not deserves, deserves a choice. <laughs> I told you I was going to start stuttering. Um, deserves a choice. Um, and the reality is, I also want to bring up the reality is that a lot of, you know, kids are having sex younger and younger. 
Um, and whether or not people agree with it or not is not anybody's business, but I think it's more and more important um, for them to have access to birth control because we don't want, you know, a child who does not feel capable of having a child to have to feel forced to have a child. Mm -hmm. So it, it's so many different ways that we can get into it. Um, but bottom line, everybody deserves to do what they want to do with their body when they want to do it without any questions or scrutiny or judgment from the next person. And I'm going to yeah. step off of my swim box because I know I was, <laughs> I went on a rant for a little bit. <laughs> no, no, you, you said it, you know, so beautifully in terms of like it being um, a part of reproductive justice to give people it's it's basically just options Absolutely. you have options to do what you want mm -hmm. um and whether that's to become a mother to not become a mother um to you know have a lot of kids have no kids um to control your body and and your future is really the, the key part of this so it's always really helpful to hear you know hear echoed back from other people and to also uh hear from you know younger people who are either right out of college or in college or younger and, and get that perspective too. Um, we, we think also a lot about um, in our coalition, really centering the voices of the people who stand the most to benefit from birth control pills going over the counter. And um, those people are often the ones who've had the most barriers stacked up against them due to systemic inequities. So young people, people of color, black and indigenous people, um, Latinx, API folks, um, people working to make ends meet. And so it's really important for those folks to not only be involved in the policy, but be leading the policy okay. because, you know, we have, we have the experience. So the policy should reflect the experience. And so um, love hearing from you and, and your, your experience as well as the experience of the young people that you work with, because it's, it all needs to be incorporated in the policies we work to advance. Yes, thank you so much. And, and and to the young people that I work with that are on the live, if you all want to put questions. a a question or comment, feel free to help me out, help us out. And I also want to ask anybody on the live if they have encountered any barriers or access to birth control themselves. Or like did anything that we mention ring true to you in your experience when going to the doctor's office? Yeah. I'd be curious to know, too, what others think. All right. Uh, if y'all shy, don't want it. Yeah, if y'all shy, it's okay. You don't, you don't want, you know, we don't want, this is a safe space. We're not here to judge. That's the thing. We're not, we're not here to judge. We're here for you. But um, I wanted to ask you, Victoria, right now, um, how can someone access birth control pills um, and how would over-the-counter birth control pills be different? Yeah, that's a great, great question. And I'll, I want to, I'll bring it to the U S context because if we go globally there, you know, birth control pills are actually over the counter in over a hundred countries. So uh, the other countries have it together for the most part. We're, we're talking about the U S uh, on this Instagram live and, um, in the U.S., currently, they're not over the counter. They're um, they're behind the counter or uh, only accessible through prescription. And so, a provider, a doctor, a nurse, uh, in some states, a pharmacist um, has to prescribe you uh, a birth control um, with via prescription, and then you have to go pick it up. So. Um, in a handful of states, they have pharmacists prescribing where a pharmacist in a, a pharmacy can actually prescribe it to you. There's also telehealth um, where a, a virtual provider might pr write you a prescription for birth control pills and then they'll mail it to you. So we are expanding the channels of access, which is really great by these new models of care through telehealth and pharmacists prescribing. But there are still a lot of barriers if you're not in one of the states that has pharmacists prescribing or there's some states that limit telehealth, you, you sometimes are out of luck and don't have access and still have to get a prescription. So what we want is to bring it over the counter, complete, completely over the counter, which would mean that 
it would be on the shelf right next to your tampons or mm -hmm. your condoms or your Advil, yeah. um, you know, all the things that you might need uh, to take care of your health, um, your reproductive health. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, that's what we really want. And we also want to make sure that it's priced affordably because we know if it's on a shelf and it costs as much as emergency contraception costs mm -hmm. in the beginning, it's not going to be accessible. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that it's fully covered by insurance so that if people do want to use their insurance, they can use that to get it covered. And we want to make sure that it's accessible to people of all ages, as you said before, like young people, college students, anyone who needs to access this should have access to it and there shouldn't be any barriers to that. So that's what we mean when we, we talk about over-the-counter access and um, our our work with the coalition, which Black Women for Wellness is a part of, and um, lots of other uh, reproductive justice organizations have been working on this for 20 years, and we're, we're so close, um, but uh, the, getting it over the counter would really change access, as you said, for, for so many people, and we're, we're excited about it and hope that it's coming soon. It will come soon. It's 222. That is an angel number. So we're, we're having this conversation on a very powerful day. So we're manifesting that it will come true. And I cannot wait to pick up birth control and pads in one grocery trip to Target at an affordable price. That's going to happen. I, I see it. Right. So yeah, to your point about making this accessible to young people for different reasons, I wanted to ask how old um, does someone have to be? to get on birth control and is it safe for young people to be on birth control? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so there are lots of, I'm not a medical provider, but there are lots of researchers and uh, medical providers that have done a lot of research and work on this. Birth control pills are actually uh, one of the safest uh, medications out there. It's been studied for over 60 years and they're very safe, very effective. Um, they're for, for young people in particular, the contraindications or in other words, any like issues or, or side effects that might come up, that's what contraindications mean, are even lower than the general population because young people are generally healthy and, um, and so there aren't as many, there are even fewer risks. There are already few risks with birth control, but even fewer risks for people who are younger. So um, the American College of Gynecologists uh, and, and um, o ACOG, American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, it's a little bit of a mouthful, <laughs> um, they're kind of the, the provider um, organization um, that represents lots of providers who are focused on um, gynecology uh, have uh, supported moving birth control pills over the counter for people of all ages, including young people. And so it's really important that folks know that there's no medical reason to restrict this um, to a certain age. Um, and young people are capable, smart, and can make uh, decisions uh, about their reproductive health on their own. Thank you for that. Sure. I, I really like that because providing the, the studies, I think, would help a lot of people really push back at their doctor's office. I know there have been times where some of my friends, because um, like you mentioned, people can use it to, you know, regulate their periods, um, where doctors have pushed back and be like, no, you're too young. You don't get right. to tell me. <laughs> I think that people having, you know, context and parents having context will allow them to even advocate for them, their children and be like, mm -hmm. no, these are safe. These are fine. Studies have been conducted and it's proven that there is no toxic or harmful effects on, you know, your child's body. So, yeah, we want this. You know, it'll give people more to stand on. I think a lot of people are just not informed that it's safe and that it's not, you know, toxic. So I really appreciate that data being um, shared today on this live. Um, I wanted to ask another question. I know I have a ton of questions, but how could somebody get involved um, in the Free the Pill work and what can they do to follow the progress? Sure, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. And so uh, for just people in general who are interested in the campaign, 
Uh, social media is a great way. Instagram, of course, we're not on, uh, we laughed about this before, but we're not on TikTok. I know that for, for young people is a, a really great uh, place to dance and learn and things like that. We're not quite there yet, but we are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And so that's a great way to stay up to date. You can go to freethepill.org uh, to learn more. We just uh, actually revamped our website to make it more user-friendly and have a lot of resources on our, our evidence page and um, lots of great resources there. And then um, there's opportunities to sign up for our um, action network, which is um, uh, a, a way for you to get regular emails about what, uh, what we're doing right now. Uh, the first ever application for an over-the-counter birth control pill is being reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration. So this is like the year where we're expecting them to make a decision. So it's uh, really exciting and a great moment to just get emails about this and stay up to date. And then the last thing that I'll mention for now is that uh, Free the Pill Day is one of our biggest celebratory days, which is on May 9th, uh, which is uh, the day that... Um, Decades ago, the FDA approved the first birth control pill for prescription use. And so we celebrate um, on May 9th and we'll be planning digital activities and maybe some potential in-person activities. Um, and so anyone who signs up for our email list will get information on that and um, be able to get involved. Um, and then I know I said that was the last thing, but I'll say one more thing and put a plug in Don't for worries. our partners. But yeah, I can. OK, I have time, I guess. Um, I have time. Um, I'll put a plug in for our partners, Advocates for Youth, who, um, as their name says, they're, they're um, working with young people um, on this issue. They have a, a Free the Pill Youth Council that launches campaigns and activities, and so uh, encourage folks to also follow them and follow their work, um, and they're going to be very busy this year um, ensuring that young people's voices are heard. Um, by the Food and Drug Administration and that the, that perspective is also centered. Um, so, you know, stay tuned, um, follow us and and um, get information through our newsletter and, um, and we'd be happy to kind of answer any questions. Now, if folks have them, I think there are some that are coming through the chat, but um, it, you may have a few more before we shift to that. All right. So I did want to acknowledge, like we said, a question that was in the chat. So I'm going to read this comment. And feel free, this is the part where, you know, y'all can ask questions. And thank you, Victoria, so much for answering all my questions thoroughly. Cool. I learned something new. I learned a lot new. But <laughs> thank you so much for breaking that down and being so patient. So, yeah, I want to read a question from the comments. So when my sister went for birth control, she was telling me how nervous she went, well, how nervous she would be. But I always tell her it's the bare minimum. She has no reason to be nervous at her big age or any age. Um, birth control and have access to do whatever you want to do with your body is your birthright. Is your body? It's your choice. Like it's that simple. I know people say it all the time, and we kind of tune it out. It's your body. It's your choice. But it literally is your body and it's your choice. So I really want you to continue to um, uplift your sister and empower her to go into those doctor's offices, knowing that she can ask for birth control whenever she wants. Um, and that is her right to ask for birth control um, and let her know that change is coming. Victoria is here for free the pill. <laughs> and we're, we're here. We're on the edge of something very, very big. Um, so this won't be for long, y'all. Tell your sister it won't be for, um, be for long and to go to that doctor's appointment with her head held high um, and get the help that she needs to make the choice that she wants to make for her, her body. And go with her if you can. <laughs> if, if, there, if there aren't other questions, I, uh, Miana, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, you asked me what, um, how young people could get involved but wanting to know from your perspective and the young people that you work with, you know, what, what are they interested in? What, what, um, what's ways that we can better engage young people? Hmm. What are they thinking about free the pill or birth control pills? What do they think about reproductive justice? Hmm. Just any other kind of insights or learnings about uh, youth engagement um, would love to hear what, 
what comes up there. And if folks in the chat have um, uh, other comments on like what you'd be interested in, in terms of engaging in uh, work to bring birth control pills over the counter or reproductive justice, we'd love to hear that too. Yeah. So I'll say that although this is a very, very serious topic, um, in that it has the potential to, you know, change the world that we live in forever. So it's a very serious topic and it has the potential to make a very big impact. Um, but I want them to know that they should be able to have fun when absorbing information. So I definitely have them making content, um, my interns specifically, content that are that is fun, easy to easy to digest. Um, we have peer educators that go to their schools and share some of the things they learn um, at Get Smart Before You Get Sexy to their peers. And Lonel and I, which is my co-program coordinator, we try to make things fun and not boring because we we also we're just we're just out of school. We're tired of being taught and you know talked and talked at. Um, if we are going to engage in this work and if we are going to create work and content that has the potential to be shown at schools and other places. We want it to be engaging and fun. We want it to be colorful. We don't want it to be, you know, dark or depressing because none of this information that we're talking about regarding sexual health and awareness is dark or depressing. And we don't want them to grow up and, you know, share that information in a dark and depressing light. We want it to be fun. And so we do infographics with fun, bright colors. Um, I try to have them use memes that are relevant um yes yeah. very corny <laughs> yes no memes they can be very corny but they make me they make me chuckle because i'm a corny person um so i think that it'll be helpful if they just keep it keep it young keep it fresh keep it hip i want them to get on tiktok um and make tiktok videos about different things but it's just i feel like doing that will destigmatize you know things like STDs and STIs, but it's also going to be kind of tricky because it's like, why are you dancing? <laughs> why are you dancing talking about you know STD rates and how they just dis disproportionately affect Black communities? Like you know, so just finding that balance between the two, I think, will be a very sweet spot. And I think that if you are looking to figure out a way to engage with youth, I would just say keep it fun, keep it light, keep it colorful, um, and just think of ways to present the information that shows the information in a positive way that is going to be impactful in a positive way um and just like no black and red flyer about free the pill and i think y'all do a very good job um might i say i looked at your website with um my manager Ketty. shout out to Ketty. hey Ketty. um and we were just blown away about how inclusive it was on the website how it was reflective of all every kind of woman, black women, um, yeah, just any kind of woman was reflected on the website, different body sizes. Um, I think I seen someone with vitiligo on there, like a, a little, um, I don't want to say, it's not a, you know, it was a fake person. It was like a, car a cartoon a animation. Yeah. Um, I couldn't think of it. Um, somebody with kinky hair, curly hair, just making sure. And then like the background is very cutesy and it's pink. And they're happy and they're smiling and freeing the pill is a good thing. So I think y'all are doing a good job. If I were to redirect somebody to your page, I think they will feel welcome. I think that they will get like a very happy and warm vibe from your page. Um, and I do believe that it already is youthful. Great. Well, that, that's really helpful. We do have young people that serve on our steering committee and, and we hear from young people often. So I'm glad we're we're hitting those, uh, you know, getting to that audience um, and speaking to that as well. And, you know, one one other kind of question that I would love to get your perspective on is like, what do you think the impact would be of over-the-counter birth control pills? We, you know, we do a lot of research at Free the Pill and, and IBIS um, and also have, um, you know, been looking at this issue for a long time, but wondering from your perspective and the perspective of someone who works with young people, what do you think the impact would be of bringing a birth control pill over the counter that's accessible to people of all ages? I think, think that they're going to need to hire a lot more staff to work the registers because I believe that the lines are going to be wrapped around the corner. Um, y there's going to be a lot that needs to be rolled out because people are going to be buying them up 
I'm just playing. No, um, that's no for real. For I really think that that we're going to really love it. Um, the society that we live in, you know, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. We've been trying to get away from going to the doctors as much as possible regarding to birth control, regarding to birth control. Um, just that'll just eliminate a ginormous barrier um, and, de- and just really make it just easy and light um, just to go to Target. And it might be available on like, um, what's what's the app where they go to the grocery store for you? Instacart. 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 Like, like, it's not yeah, an easy game. Great. <laughs> like, you can get yeah. it straight at your doorstep birth yeah. control at your doorstep so it's the biggest thing is it's going to be really accessible to everybody who not even needs it because i always say they need it it's just as simple as wanting it that's enough that's enough for everybody if you want birth control you should be able to get birth control and having it accessible over the counter um will allow them to just go and get what they want um and take control of their narratives they get to write their own stories and control their own stories no barriers, no restrictions. Um, even if it's, you know, a transportation issue, having it over the counter will allow for it to be open. I mean, allow for it to be at different stores um, in different communities so they can, you know, walk to the store and get it. They wouldn't have to, you know, ask for your health insurance if you don't have it. Of course, you were mentioning having it available and free if you have health insurance. But also, if you don't have health insurance, being able to just go and get that um, birth control that they need will be very helpful. It'll give everybody what they need. Um, a win is a win. It'll be a big win for the world that we live in. Um, and it'll be good for parents too, um, who have children who experience heavy menstrual cycles and they just want to go and help their child out. It'll, it's, it'll be a win for everybody. Um, and it's a very simple way to fix this problem and eliminate these barriers. Just making it accessible over the counter will be very helpful and very impactful. It'll change the world forever. It really will. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And it's great to hear, you know, from your perspective, what you see the impact of this being for young people, for people in general, uh, for, you know, you mentioned parents. Sometimes parents are on birth control themselves, you know. So this is something that a lot of people take and that a lot of people, um, you know, use for lots of different reasons. And so making it more accessible will will just change a lot of people's lives and their future. So um, it's been, yeah, a lovely conversation with you. Um, I don't know if there, I haven't been checking the uh, comments, but um, but yeah, it's been really great to check in with you about this and to hear more about what you're doing uh, at Black Women for Wellness. And um, we've so loved partnering with you. Um, I know your uh, your leader, Jan, has been on several of our webinars. And so um, it's really great to be able to partner and work closely with, with folks who are working in on the ground in communities and and learn from you as well. So thank you so much for your leadership in, in this work and uh, for the opportunity to chat. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chat with me. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you for all the gems that you dropped. I'll be taking them with me into other conversations. I did learn so much um, about birth control. Um, and one of the biggest things that I learned um, is that, you know, there's no age restrictions to birth control because I always thought that too growing up. But um, that's good to hear. That's great to know. I always thought that it was like based off of what the doctor thought. But if a, if a parent wants to, you know, get their young child on birth control, they can. And there is scientific evidence proving that it will not harm them. Um, and that's very big for me. So thank you for dropping that, Jewel. If y'all have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. Or if you want to learn anything or if you want us to elaborate further on anything that we discussed, please let us know because we we have some time. I see a heart in the comment, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that heart. I love um, birth control, too. (laughs) All right, y'all. We gonna go ahead and wrap it up. This was a very, very powerful conversation and it was very inspiring to me. Um, and please, 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 um, don't forget to follow Free the Pill on Instagram. 
So it's going to be free underscore underscore. No, okay, I stuttered. See, my track started skipping. Hold up. Free underscore the underscore pill. And that's where you can find them and learn more about their wonderful work that they are doing and how you can get involved. Go ahead and follow them on Twitter and all the social media accounts. It's pretty easy. Um, and if you are not able to figure it out, go to their website, go to the very bottom. Um, there should be an area um, directing to their socials. It's very important to follow them, y'all. This is something that's going to be impactful for all of us. All right, y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate the y'all have a, support. Yeah, thank y'all for joining. Y'all go ahead and y'all have a wonderful evening. And thank you so much, Victoria. Yeah, and happy Black History Month. We're still in February. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Y'all. Take care. Bye. You take care too. Bye.